Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly, brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me as your host, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. For today's episode, I'm joined by the awesome Patrick Not Picard Stewart. In this regular video series, we round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. What is it, Pat? It's Full Force Weekly! Woohoo! Yes, it is. How are you doing this fine morning or whatever time it is in the day? How are you, Pat? Doing just fine. It's like it's been forever since we talked. I know. It's like, yeah. What was it? It's been what's 24 it been? hours or something. Like <laughs> less than that, actually. Less, less than 24 hours. It's like 21 hours, I think it's been, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, maybe. Although we did, we did actually, you know, um, start before one o'clock yesterday. As in, we were talking to each other. So technically, less than that. Anyway, good to have you on, mate. You're fresh from our monthly. How was how was that? Did you enjoy the uh, O ring talk? Oh yeah, it's it's still out there. If anybody missed it, they can just go watch the O ring after this, or just stop watching this crap and go straight over there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure we have something to talk about today. We always we always talk, even if there is nothing to talk about. Well, you say that, but it's actually been quite a busy week. Um, I, it's it's interesting because these little things kind of creep up on you. Um, but when I was going through the um, the kind of week, as I do, break it down, put it into document form, so we know have like a, a you know a, a nice structure to work with. I'm like, oh my god, there's actually been loads. We've had comics news this week. We've had other comics news this week which we'll get into as well which is very exciting we've had classified in like news we've had higher toys news we've had all sorts of stuff um and in, and pat's favorite listings updates how on a level of one to weetabix how are you on the uh, listings today i'm i'm probably somewhere around waffleos right now <laughs> I don't know where that is. I don't know where that is. Um, it could be beyond Weetabix. Pat could be really excited, but we'll never know until next year when Pat reveals what those code words actually mean. Um, amazing. I uh, hope everyone's doing well in the chat as well. Lots of you that here already. Hope everyone has having a good start to their weekend. Um, I know this is always a good start for us, isn't it? We always, this always gets us off to a nice kind of like, you know, getting into the week, the weekend. Yeah, sure. Also, there's a blooming big news coming out of WonderCon today, but we uh, obviously won't know until later on today. But I will be going live with Travis Moody of A Toy Kind of Mood uh, around about whenever I can get the graphics sorted out. Um, so I don't know, any time uh, after we, all the reveals happen. So we'll be going live talking about that. And we've got other bit of cool news about WonderCon as well, Pat, but which we'll, we'll talk about when we get there, shall we? Which is quite cool. Anyway, let's get on with the news. Uh, we'll start then with, well, technically this is Chris's book report is what this turns into. Uh, it is a bit of comics news. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Yes, Duke issue four was out this week um, on Wednesday, and it is absolutely phenomenal. It is a real bit of a breathtaking one, uh, very fast paced. Um, obviously, the last time we, and there will be no major spoilers in this one, major, uh, just general spoilers. Um, so I'm going to, a quick kind of overview of where we left off with Duke. Uh, so in the last issue, we had um, obviously the situation where um, Duke, Clutch, and the Baroness are being held at the pit uh, for transportation. Well, Duke and uh, Rock and sorry, Duke and Clutch are being held for transportation. I think that the Baroness is just there because she's been naughty. Um, anyway, they're kind of like trying to talk about how to. Well, she was trying to help, the, trying to get them to help her escape. Then, well, I'll give it away now because it's it's. A, an issue ago now, but Major Blood turned up with his Blood Hounds. I think they were called. How did have you seen this yet, Pat? Have you heard about the Blood Hounds? Um, I I have I've read the issue. Oh, this, good. Yeah, I should have started with that, shouldn't I? Just to make sure that you weren't going to be spoiled by anything in the previous issue. But yeah, the Blood Hounds I thought was quite a fun little addition, like kind of like Major Blood's little troops. 
And I kind of thought, oh, I wonder if that's something we'll probably see it in the future in like, I don't know, um, we what just talked about it. But... Con? You what, bud? What were they called at Joe Con, his troops? I, I have no recollection. Uh, I'm having a look now. What year was that? 2005 or 2006? I'm going to say 2006 and see what comes up. The New Orleans one. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, 2006. I think. I think yeah. so. 2006. <clears throat> the Heroes Unite, Cobra's Most Wanted Mercenaries. Uh, they were called the Skull Squad. That's right. Skull Squad. Skull Squad. Yeah. I got there eventually. You got there quicker than me, but yeah, Skull Squad. Um, so yeah, we get we get we get bloodhounds in this one. So do you think we're going to start seeing major blood troop builders in uh, in uh, like say Super Seven, and I would say classified. You know, there's a possibility of it. I, I don't. I wouldn't call it out of the question. It did seem like they were basically, uh, you know, built from existing Cobra parts, if that made sense. Right. Like yeah. A little more. Like it, it looks like you could you could make them reasonably from parts that are already out there. I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I will. I, I'll kind of say that. Yeah, I liked the fact they included those guys, and that that I did have. It did have vibes of. Um, I'm not sure if you're a fan of the Venture Brothers, but it did have vibes of some of the Monarchs henchmen. <laughs> if you if you read that issue, I I I thought there was quite a fun little like. Almost like that. They just reminded me of like that they'd be numbered. Do you know what I mean? It'd be like henchman twenty one. Oh, henchman. <laughs> sure. But um, anyway, that was yeah. So basically, they turn up and they're they're there to wipe everyone out because Destro doesn't want um, you know, he doesn't want anyone living in that scenario. So he hires Blood in order to do so to take them out. Blood fails, and I think a lot of people, and I will admit myself included, Blood gets shot in the what looks to be the head um now if you'd been paying attention in that issue you'd have noticed that he doesn't well he didn't have an eye patch both of his eyes were still available to him i didn't notice that did you notice that pat you know what come to think of it i don't think i did i was just i saw blood but and i didn't it didn't dawn on me that he had both eyes well, you know, there's some debate as to whether or not Major Blood always had both eyes because yeah, true. Uh, since sometimes he's depicted as a sniper, some people have thought that that maybe the the eye patch there is there to condition him to condition the eye uh, for sniping purposes. So nice, I like that. Um, yeah, it could have been that, but yeah, I I don't think Blood's gone by any any stretch of the imagination. I don't I don't think so. Uh, I take you haven't read issue four yet, then. I I don't have issue four. Okay, I will not give anything else away at this stage. But um, obviously, that major thing happened in issue three, and so going into issue four, lots of cool stuff happens. We get um, some sort of like, I would say like uh, character in inclusions um, in this one as well, which again. I was really excited to see, and again, it's it does feel like it. Sometimes it this has the it, I'm loving this the the comics by the way, absolutely loving them. But I will say that sometimes it feels like we're it's like the the kid you know the the uh, Sunbow how Sunbow was kind of utilized almost as the adverts for the toys almost. It kind of feels yeah. like when you when you turn a page, it's like oh yeah, there's that guy that's in classified. I can you know I I need to get that figure. Um, I kind of feel like it's like our version of that, like an adult version. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, again, we get another character introduction, which is really cool. I won't give that one away. We actually get a couple, but we're going to be talking about the covers uh, for issue five. This is issue four, by the way. We're going to be talking about the covers for issue five, um, and obviously that does have some slight spoilers in what is you know, coming to come in the series. And the, a lot of these covers have been out, so we know that... For example, the Battle Android Trooper is heavily utilized uh, on these covers. So it was clear that we were going to get a Battle Android Trooper at some point. So I don't really see this as a massive spoiler. But Duke does finally meet a Battle Android Trooper in this issue. Um, and obviously in issue five, we, we're going to get the... This is the final issue, issue five, of the Duke miniseries. 
and we're going to see what happens with Duke with his uh, what he's found basically and uh, all the information that I can't really give away without giving any major spoilers. Uh, but anyway, that is the issue four. Now, going into these covers, like I said, we've kind of seen the Battle Android Trooper kind of hinted at uh, really strongly, and it was always going to happen. Um, are you excited to see where this... Uh, I mean, have you enjoyed the series so far, Pat? You know, I, I think that it, it's... Uh, um, it, it done right it should be different than the other comic that's being made already by larry hama i mean yeah that's that to me is always going to be the main story of gi joe so if you're going to do another one which i think is worth doing um i i like that they are making it as different as possible but yet also incorporating designs that exist by using yeah. the classified designs because sometimes uh sometimes brand new designs don't necessarily always work and then you're committed to them I, I think that there's been a proving grounds for these designs so it's a smart thing to do yeah um and uh, yeah again like i'm loving these covers that um i do have the information of who did what on the covers and i always forget to get that up ready because i uh think i've done everything and then forget something very simple like that um, but anywho, massive shout out to Mark Seddon and Talking Joe, of course, because I keep stealing all of his um, posts and reposting them. Um, but it's just easier than uh, me doing all the work. So uh, Duke 5, cover A, is by Tom Riley on the left-hand side there. Uh, cover B is by Mateus Santaluku on the right-hand side there. And I really like that one. There's some something very Terminator-esque about that one, isn't there, Pat? I, I was already getting that vibe. Yeah, I was picturing just you know half of the claw going, going <laughs> up through the, at the end. Yeah, like doing that at the end, going into the into the yeah. Uh, anyway, um, brilliant stuff. Uh, then we have um, the next cover on the left hand side with that kind of Destro floating, you know, kind of half transparent in the background or opaque in the background. Uh, it is a one is it cover cover C one ten copy incentive connecting cover so by Tyler Boss and Jason Wordy so that is uh, the connector or is that is that the connector I was wondering if the one on the right was the connector because that's the one that looks like the connectors but in terms of order they've kind of put it in that order so I wonder if that one on the right is the connecting cover one or not um, I'm not sure though because I don't know exactly which one's which. Anyway, we might be able to work it out by who did the covers. Tyler Boss and Jason Wordy. I don't know. I think that's them on the right, actually. And then on the left-hand side, I believe that's cover D, which is 125 copy incentive by Brian Lavelle. Um, and then the cover E, which is this one, is the Dustin Nguyen, and this is amazing. Um, I, I love how cool the bat looks on this one, Pat. Yeah, looks really good. I like it. Yeah, it's really kind of connecting covers because I never saw them all connected. We're going to need to do that. I'm going to need to get them all yeah. together and uh, yeah, actually see which one, like which ones, like go with what. Because I'm pretty sure it's the one on the right that connects because that's got the same vibe as the other ones. There's been there was one like where it was like a building that they he was jumping out of, and then the other one was like a <clears throat> you know like a junkyard with all the cars racing around it. Right. And I think that that looks more like the vibe of the one on the right hand side. Um, Matt has actually asked, has anyone shown all the connected covers put together? I haven't seen that yet, actually. I'm sure that I'm sure it exists somewhere. And if not, we'll probably do it and post it. Um, or maybe Mark Seddon will do it from uh, Talking Joe and then I'll steal it and repost it. Thank you, Mark. Um, but yeah, anyway, some really nice covers for cover five coming out. And uh, I'm excited to see where the story kind of finishes, really. Or it obviously not finishes, but the mini series finishes. Uh, obviously, the story is going to keep going. Um, but yeah, I've been really impressed so far. And um, but that isn't all. The, that isn't all the comics news this week, Pat. We have got a bit of vintage comic news to talk about next, which I'm super excited about. So let's get to it. <laughs> Yes, Battle Action Force returns, people. Um, quite very exciting, this, because obviously this um, relates to 
uh, people very close to us, Pat, uh, in Paddy and Brian, uh, Total Toy Books. Um, and I'll read out the entire press release because obviously that has all the information you're ever going to need. Um, and thanks to Brian for allowing us to be the ones to break the news. So um, that was really, that was amazing. So thank you very much for allowing us to do that. Uh, so Battle Action Force was published weekly from October 1983 to November 1986 by IPC Magazines Limited and brought together some of the greatest talents in the British comics industry of the time. Both on the editorial and illustrative fronts, including names like Jerry Finley Day, Jeff Campion and Cam Kennedy, included in its pages with the Adventures of Action Force, created by British toy manufacturer Palatoy. Four heroic Action Force teams, infantry specialist Z-Force, ocean-based Q-Force, infiltration specialist the SAS and orbital guardian Space Force protected the world against the evil machinations of Baron Ironblood, the Black Major and their army of brainwashed Red Shadows. Now, for the first time in over 40 years, Total Toy Book, 40 years, Total Toy Books, with kind permission from Hasbro and in collaboration with Rebellion Publishing and Skeletron, are proud to announce an officially licensed reprint of the Action Force Tales from Battle Action Force collected in a series of deluxe-sized treasury editions. With original issues difficult to find and expensive to purchase in full, this is a collection not to be missed by fans of the original series or for those who only discovered the existence of the comic in more recent times. More details about this exciting series will be revealed in the coming weeks. Sign up to the mailing list at totaltoybooks.com to be the first to find out more about this forthcoming series. Pat, how cool is this? You know, for for me, like I can remember uh, learning about Action Force in the early 90s, but as the internet kind of was pouring more information out there it was just i wanted to sit down and read these with physical copy and um this is going to be amazing to be able to do that i mean it is a massive amount of stories as well like it's so i mean it's it, when you really kind of take into consideration how many like issues this spans as well like, yeah it's, it's just going to be great the fact we're going to get like treasury editions of this is is way like i i would say it's like way like too long in in coming really like it, it, this is something that should have been done a long long time ago i think yeah and honestly one of the big barriers was it was just frustrating to to think about even trying to collect all of these in order to read them so this is going to be a really great way to get them without having to worry about any of that totally um, I'm really excited to see what they do. Uh, we don't have any more, well, we don't have any information we can give up at this time, but there will be more information to come. Um, so yeah, like this, all we know so far is what's in the press release. And like I said, there's gonna be more information about what those treasury editions will contain. Um, you know, or, like th there's been some kind of questions and details about like, you know, oh, will it be, will it be colorized? Will it be this, that, and the other? I We don't have that information yet, but obviously that information will come to light very soon so uh for, for any questions about specifics about this um we can't can't say or we don't know at this stage um but it's all very exciting um it's nice to finally have like an official kind of you know kind of sign of seal of approval on this as well uh and i just i get excited whenever i see skeletron invo involved in something as well i kind of think oh good <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's also a seal of quality as well. Total Toy, toy Books, Skeletron Rebellion. It's, it's, I don't know. There's just an element here that you just know this is going to be really frigging good. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm definitely in on this. I will be picking these up. And there's something about uh, there's something about the fact that this is a vintage thing that makes yeah. me more inclined to uh, to really dig into it whenever it comes in hand. So this is something as well I'm going to say, Pat, which I don't know if you agree with or not, but do you think doing something like this and getting this out in a more kind of, like I say, an official capacity in a way that is like going to be easily attainable, I guess, um, all that kind of stuff, um, would you kind of then be more confident to see characters from this series show up in toy form currently? Yeah, you know, that that actually kind of makes more sense to me. I think that uh, people, obviously, people become more attached to a character whenever they've 
read them or seen them in a cartoon. So yeah, I think that that, that would make a lot more sense. So far, the characters that we've seen have been pretty limited to the ones that have been figures already. Uh, so maybe there are some others in there that that could shine through. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of really just hoping that the classified team see it, read it, and be like, "Oh yeah, Baron Ironblood, we'll do him now. We'll do Kraken now. Or we'll do you know that's what I want to see. Right. I want to see yeah. I want to see some of that kind of stuff. Or like you know, SS Eagle, which they kind of already have technically done. I think Ironblood <laughs> would be more likely than than uh, Kraken. Although oh, yeah. you never know. Uh, like we we've been saying, Kraken could fit right alongside um, Cobra Law, so you never know. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah, I would I would love to. Uh, RKW says just got here. Is this a video game? No, no, that I know I know what you're saying though. It's got that video game vibe of the graphic. No, this is uh, Battle Action Force. We'll be getting kind of like a reprinted Treasury Edition um, kind of official release uh, through comic. Total Toy. Co yeah, the comics through Total Toy Books. Rebellion and Skeletron, not a video game, just to be clear on that. Um, we haven't actually, do you know what? Speaking of the video game, we haven't heard. Um, I need to get in contact with Kerry again to work out or to see if we can get another interview going because we haven't heard anything about the release. I think what our kind of idea or theory was that there's probably multi platform going on and they were just keeping it, you know, they were, they were doing the work that needs to be done and that's put a delay on it. Uh, but we will, we will see, we will see. Um, Mark says, full articulation, Super 7 SAS Eagle, please and thank you. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I agree. Kraken is so toyetic, why wouldn't they make him, says Ed. Yeah, that's another good point. Um, I, I actually think, I actually think um, we could see... I actually think we could see a lot of these in the Super 7 line. More likely, I think we could see some right. stuff coming out of this because, you know, I, I feel like they would be more inclined to do that. And because they're already in that kind of vibe anyway. And now if there's a as the kind of almost like there's an official media to back it up, they might be like more inclined to to throw a few of those in the O-ring. Well, I mean, Super 7 and monster stuff was always kind of a thing. So I think that that is a is a plus for them anyway. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anyway, really excited about this one. We'll be speaking to Brian um, about this very soon, actually. Um, we've got to work out some details, but uh, we will be doing an interview um, with Brian. And hopefully there'll be, at that point, there'll probably be more news and he might even be revealing stuff on that particular interview. So we will see. Um, in any case, massive shout out to Brian Hickey and Paddy Lennon, Total Toy Books, Rebellion, Skeletron, everyone involved, Hasbro as well. Cannot wait for this one. And um, really, really excited to see what these treasury editions are going to be like. Because again, Me too. my blooming dude, my GI Joe bookshelf is getting crazy. I mean, mainly because Carson brought one out that's so big you can't fit it in anything. You have you have a shelf that fits that? Well, I say shelf. I have one, two, three, four of those cubbies. You know the uh, the the IKEA cubbies at the bottom. Okay, just all GI Joe books now. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, you've got, you've got like James Kavanagh books in there. You've got yep. what else have we got in there? We've got Carson's kind of first series in the little, the, the kind of like box set. I've got, um, I say it's not all GI Joe actually. There's some, there's a Transformers uh, Museum Edition thing in there. Did you ever get one of those? Ever see that before? It's like a big long book that's got loads of fun things inside it when you open it up. Yeah, I have that. I have that same book. I forget what they've called all of those, but I have that. Vault. Vault. Transformers right. Vault. That, it's yeah. that blue cover with Optimus on it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you could have said that about any book ever with Transformers. Well, yeah, that is, that is true. <laughs> it's the blue one with Optimus Prime on it. Well, there's also like the one that's the Autobot symbol that shifts, and then the Covenant of Primus is in it. I my my bookshelf has been full for years. I've got uh, so many old Toy Fair catalogs and stuff. Toy and Fair, just, yes. Yeah, I've got like all the cabin the Kavanaugh books. I don't even know if all of those made it on there. Like I I have a couple of those um, book holders, and I have those uh, Dan Klingensmith's books. Uh, the Dan's, Mark Delamo yeah. books are not even on there right now because I was referencing those yeah. and spaces get filled in. Like I, yeah. I probably need another bookshelf. 
Oh, easily. And I, that just makes me happy to think that there's so much yeah. G.I. Joe kind of reference material out there. I love it. And then, yep. and of course, your total toy books from, from the, from, you know, like uh, Total Action Force, Volume 1, Volume 2. I mean, uh, there's going to be a Skeletron, uh, you know, a, a Robo Skull Mark II book as well soon. My goodness. Uh, My Palatoy Story by Bob Breakin as well. It's just never ending. I love it. Um, anyway, bring it on. Give us more battle action force. Cannot wait. This is very exciting. Like I said, we'll be speaking with Brian about this very soon. Cannot wait to do that. Right then. Uh, next up then, Pat. Um, we have other news to talk about. Oh, it's oh, 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 I know what it is. It's the artist collection. You ready for this? I am. <laughs> Yes, who'd have thunk it? Um, so here we are, minding our own business, and then on Twitter I get a get tagged in a in a post by Collectorian. Um, shout out to the Collectorian who found this and saying, Oh, I found this website, uh, the GIJ Classified Series Artist Collection. Now, this actually feels like it might have been out for a while, and I just we just didn't realize it or notice. Uh, but the website seems to be curated by um, ex Hasbro art director and lead designer on the classified series packaging, Cecil Cates, and because um, it, it's obviously you know he's the one that's that's put this together, and he's also got Transformers on there and some other stuff on there, which is really cool. It's a really awesome website. You can go check it out, and it's all the art you know compiled over a certain period of time. Specifically with the classified series series artist collection, it stops at a certain point. I think it's like the first 50 releases that are on there, but it's really good website to check out if you haven't already. Link in the description. Um, how good is it, Pat, to finally have this kind of accessible for the first time ever? Yeah, that's really nice. I didn't realize the Transformers stuff is on there. I'm going to have to go take another look. Uh, you were talking about all the G.I. Joe ones, so I didn't even have to go to the website. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, because we were posting them in the thing, weren't right. we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adam was uh, was going, oh, there's this one, this one, this one. Um, what's really fun about it is that um, we went the longest time without seeing a full version high res of the Beachhead Cobra Island release. Um, and that is this one right here um, from Ashley Witter Masco, I think it is. Um, now, we. Uh, we we reached out to Ashley. I think um, a number of us did on the, in the thing to try and see if we can get this artwork, um, like just a kind of high res version of it to actually see it because it felt like every other piece of artwork was shared by the artist, shared by Hasbro, whatever it may be. It was kind of out there in some way, shape, or form. And um, and then yeah, we we didn't really have a good one of Beachhead anywhere. So the fact that this uh, website now exists where you can go and check out this artwork. It's amazing. So yeah, go check it out. Um, I, the, the question kind of like comes up quite often with the artist collection here, Pat. Could you see them putting this together in some sort of book at some point? Could you see them do that? Or do you think it's going to be one of those things that never really happens? I, I think it probably would, would never really happen. I mean, there were those Marvel masterpieces that were awesome, an awesome card set that Marvel did release kind of just through comic book form. And, you know, maybe that's still a possibility. I kind of wonder how well these would sell just, you know, as a, as a comic on the shelf um, month to month. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of I'd lo I'd love to see some sort of coffee table book uh, with this artwork in it, and it does feel like there's a nice kind of like fifty and out sort of vibe that you could kind of do, and then everything else, you know, it's it kind of changes at that point. I think where we get the artwork kind of like minimized to the to all the, to like very thin, everything becomes like quite thin, and you don't get these kind of like big sort of like set pieces going on in the background. Um, one thing I think I noticed at the time, but can't remember, don't, probably didn't remember, was the fact that the Pterodrome is in the background of uh, Beachhead's art. I think that's really cool up in the, kind of like just above his head, kind of like in the in the middle in the background. That's pretty neat. And I do like, I did like the art that they did for that, specifically like picking out these little Easter eggs and, you know, little homages and things like that. I love the fact that the dragon, the tiger fly was on Rakondo's art. I love that. Um, just kind of like there in the corner and you just kind of think, oh yeah, we're we getting a tiger fly. Um, that would be nice, but I don't, I, I can't see it. Um, Pastor Progi says Terradrome has lab confirmed. 
<laughs> Jeez. All right. T- let's let's break that down. Even if they did a quarter of a Terradrome for the classified series and you could buy four of them, how friggin' huge would that be? It would have to be like this big. It would have to be like the size of a of a pretty small child. Wouldn't yeah, that... I've I've sometimes wondered if they could do like part of one or a wedge of one. Like I think we've talked about that before. Maybe a um, room. Stackable rooms until you've built an entire technodrome. Pterodrome, not technodrome. I've got well, my turtles. Build a technodrome and... too, if you're a ter- <laughs> turtles fan, I guess. <laughs> if it's a generic room, yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Anyway, I'm just really happy that the art exists now that we can kind of like um, you know access it kind of comfortably and see all of it. It's really nice. And like I said, it's, it's it stops at a certain point, but I think the art kind of sort of changes a little bit, doesn't it? Um, after the it, fact, it does. But if you were to build a book, you'd just uh, work with the layout, um, inc- include things like the chuck, all that chuckles art that was made. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It, it could be like it, a whole they'd page. Be able, they'd be able to work that out. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I also wonder if not like, <coughs> excuse me, not like that Cecil was the the kind of holder of that kind of information necessarily, but because he was the 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 kind of art director and the lead on it, I wonder if like based on him not being there anymore, uh, which is obviously a shame. He was obviously um, I think involved in the uh, the layoffs, the last layoffs um, situation, which is really sucky because I I really like Cecil and he was on a few um, live streams and all that kind of stuff and I, he always seemed like a really nice guy, so that was obviously really sucky. Um, but I wonder if, like, the idea of a book for the artist collection kind of went when he left. I don't know if that, I mean, I'm sure someone could always take that up, can't they? But you know how sometimes there's always someone that's like the, the kind of the, the the main support behind something? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, like, I wonder if he was that person and now that he's not there, that might be a kind of, you know, a pipe dream. It, it may be. I mean, it, I guess it depends on how much we keep on asking for it and whether or not they think that that's something that would make money or it probably would take somebody in the community to uh, to really be the, the person putting it together, I think. I mean, there um, could be a licensee. You never know. I mean, G.I. Yeah. Joe's doing well, so there's a chance. That's true. Um Coffee table size pterodrome says Ed. Jamie Lynn says, "Guys, have you seen the size of the set Super Seven Cat's Lair? It can be done. Um, yeah, but you'd need like four of them to make a pterodrome. How could you functionally make a quarter of a pterodrome? <laughs> you can't. You can't functionally do it, but you'd forcibly do it, and then you'd have to buy four of them to create it. But the funny thing is, you're right. Like there'd be that thing of how would you make the logo in the middle, like." be a proper logo um you know when it closes yeah that, that center bubble would just have to be a a separate release or something I, I don't know i mean you could do half of it and then just have an extra one of those i i don't know that's a problem for the designer they're just gonna have to deal with it it's just gonna have to do, yeah because they're obviously gonna do it um hilarious um I just saw some of this art pop up at Target as posters, says White. Yes, uh, the actual hmm. art we've seen in multiple places. We've seen it on t shirts. We've seen it on, there was that kind of like website that they would like, re- re- when they released a new figure, it would go up on this website as, you know, prints that you could order and you could have it in like all sorts of different ways and sizes and all sorts. Um, and then, of course, Pat, there's always the classic 80s tease reveal um, week, which we always used to really enjoy, when 80s tees would reveal a character before it came out in the uh, in the actual classified series. That doesn't really happen anymore, does it? No, I was checking. It's It's been less than a month, though, that since I've checked to make sure. <laughs> Go and check out 80s tees now, just in case. Um, or oh, amazing. Anyway, that is uh, the artist collection. Like I said, the website you can check out in, in the link uh, in the description. And it's just really cool. It's really nice to have it all in one place. And I uh, hope that we do get something in like an official book capacity in the future. Anyway, let's move on to the next news item. There's lots of news items. I believe it's listings next, Pat. Am I am I correct? Because I've forgotten the. It, it is. It is. We can get so, to this. I, I only. <laughs> 
<laughs> I only said that because I wanted Pat to say it out loud. Earlier in the week, uh, I popped up with a little listings update, and we're just going to go through that little update as quickly as possible so that Pat can uh, stop crying in the background there. Look, he's so upset. He's, he's not even paying attention now, and it's fine. I totally understand. Uh, so the updates we had for you guys. Uh, now, this page of 2024 hadn't changed dramatically, but if you are late to the party, um, obviously, we've um, popped Night Force, Shockwave, and the uh, Pursuit Cycle in the left-hand column in here's space ghost um we still can't reveal who bam bam is in that four figure wave but we'll get there eventually hopefully fingers crossed or it'll be revealed before we get the opportunity to do so um and then of course we could reveal though that road pig who was uh officially name only dropped um was highway pet which means that road pig will come with an animal companion which again we can't discuss yet so that'll just be have to be a nice surprise for everyone or when images leak or whatever happens first um then of course we go over to the other side of that screen we are aware that the mm designation means pulse con sorry means pulse or pulse con exclusive so uh the pulse con exclusive in this case mm designation is starduster and everything else that's mm is uh pulse exclusive hope that makes sense so we know that scrappy is and uh, of course, we know that Raptor is SDCC now as well. And we know that the Ferret Scout is Scooby VEH. For the rest of those in red, we don't know who Fred is. We don't know who Whip Snakes is. Uh, we do know Yogi and Zorak, but we can't say anything yet, unfortunately. But we do know their target and Walmart. And we know we don't know what HB Blossom VEH is. But we do know that it is uh, either Amazon or Fanmazon um, because of that particular listing showing up on Amazon. Now, we also know that Cobra Commander is going to be Retro Casey, but again, this is information we've had for ages. You guys have known about that for a long time. We have no clue who Oki and Azrael are uh, at this stage. Hopefully, we will find out soon, sooner rather than later. And of course, Rough and Ready were revealed a while back to be the Action Marine and Action Pilot. Now, not like I said, nothing has changed uh, on this particular form. Uh, for I, I don't even think it changed when we did the um, the last update. I might have thrown in the Amazon or Famazon uh, edition. But I did take Sal Pet off this side because we did find out that Sal Salvador was Sal Pet. So we know that that is the same listing as that. Which So we've, we've changed Salvador to Salvador Pet. We've also managed to unlock um, a number of the name-only reveals that have recently popped up um, in their standard retail wave of four listings. So we know that Xandar is Homer. We know that Saw Viper is Maggie. We know that Leatherneck is Marge. And we know that Daltone is Lisa. And they're the first four-figure wave of 2025. And then the second um, wave of four figures will include Frag Viper, Grandpa, and Blowtorch, Bart. Now, we don't know who Smithers and Flanders are yet. And we don't know any of the others that are in red. Not a clue. The only other things we know that have been um, kind of like revealed or kind of like we've revealed um, are the fact that we believe the TT designation is Pulse or Pulse and PulseCon. So if you look at the, the tick, effectively, was what those TT designations are, we can see that they're all, we know that some of them are Pulse and we know we, we have an inkling that Arthur Deluxe is going to be the PulseCon one because of the fact that it's a Deluxe. And in the past, in the previous, the Daphne Deluxe uh, PulseCon exclusive was Starduster, as you can see there. So that was our kind of thought process on that one. And then the only other thing we can kind of say with any certainty at this point is that the legacy designation is the new name or the new term in code word land for the 60th anniversary line. Okay, that is pretty much everything. Pat, are you happy now that you know all that stuff? Sure. I'll take this time to just respond to Mr. Cheeseburger by saying O-ring Kraken for sure. Because, <laughs> you know, re responding to stuff that is related to code words, uh, you know, it's it's whatever. We could, we could just be done with the code words again. It's there nice to get an update. I appreciate seeing what you know and we can uh, organize for everybody. But it's all in code. 
Yeah, it's like it, it. Yeah, it's just like looking at an undone crossword puzzle without any of the uh, clues either. So uh, yeah, it's just yeah. It actually what is what it is exactly what we're looking at right now. Uh, anyway, there you go, guys. That's your updates for the leak listings 2024 and 2025. Now there was this little addition, which I don't think we spoke about, Pat. I think I'm not sure if we did speak about. No, the, we uh, haven't. The selfie series um, kind of uh, like listings that popped up his tank dropped these and um basically we had sorry i'm multitasking um we had um these listings a long quite a while back and we were under the assumption that they were planned and canned the selfie series cobra officer and the selfie series storm shadow now there's a couple of talking points here pat that we can quickly um kind of run through we're either looking at a planned and canned situation or we're looking at a relaunch of the selfie series. If you were a betting human, what do you think you would, how, which way would you be leaning? There's always a possibility that selfie would be done as like a few short bursts, limited time things. And rather than keeping it online and, and you can sign up at any time, because I'm sure one or they did it before, they had a peak at the beginning and then it just leveled off. Yeah, uh, but I'm still going to bet that this was just lingering around and that it's no longer an option. That'd be yeah. my my guess. How about yourself? I agree with that one. I think it was. I personally think it was a planned and canned stuff. But again, uh, <laughs> so I just put that cheeky comment up because I thought it was hilarious. Uh, Pastor Pierogi says during code names, Pat looks like a person stuck in a meeting that could have been an email. I love that. I mean, technically, it was. Uh, that information has been sent to Pat, and he just goes. I don't care. And then, I'll, right, we'll get you on a Zoom call and then we'll go over it that way. Um, I'm kidding. This isn't Zoom. Um, in any case, yeah, selfie series. I, I feel personally it's probably planned and canned, but you never know. Um, the, and the fact that, you know, and again, a couple of people mentioned, oh, they're both male kind of figures, though. And then I thought, ah, maybe the Cobra officer would be a Valkyrie. Yeah. Maybe that's what it would be. And, you know, but you'd probably want a... Cobra officer and of Cobra Valkyrie. That would kind of make sense to me if you had, if you had a male and female Cobra trooper, and then like you go to the Joes and you had like a Steel Core would be. I think that would make a lot of sense personally if they ever did that. But um, maybe they want to keep that kind of core character thing going with Storm Shadow. But I don't even know how you do that without the skin tone matching kind of situation, unless you had multiple arm skin tones oh, as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's or, true. Or he has sleeves. They and they just, just do they... sleeves. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. That, that would require actually making a something of a new figure, which really wasn't what we got before. Oh, I mean kit bash, but even so, you're right. They'd have to like the still the logistics have to line up to actually, you know, get those parts uh manufactured right. and then put together. So yeah, you're totally, totally right on that one. Um Pa says, D Pat doesn't read the TPS reports. He had to come in on a Saturday. Um, uh, hey, Pat, I uh, could you go ahead and come in on a Saturday and <laughs> talk about the TPS reports, please? Um, I don't know where Captain my stapler is. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Captain K said, would this be Selfie Series 3.0? If it came out, I guess it would be. We yeah, I guess it would too, be. We? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm also. Is it quite funny as well that they that you've got Cobra Officer? Well, I suppose you had Snake Eyes before, but you have Cobra Officer and Storm Shadow, who are more famous for having masks on, and especially like for a trooper, you might have the helmet pop on or something, possibly. But then no haircut, or would you have the hair? How would you do it? Or maybe they're just eager to do these because they only have to worry about making this <laughs> part special. You can't tell if those are your eyes on that selfie series figure. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine if the selfie series is just, yeah, we're just going to literally copy this bit. So, uh, yeah. you just All you have to do, actually, is just write in what color eyebrows and eyes you have. And then that's it. We'll, we'll do the rest. Um, amazing. Uh, fantastic. Um, Pass Brogy says, I was surprised they killed the selfie series so soon after announcing new features. I mean, I would be surprised, but like Hasbro do have a an interesting track record in you know like you can you can do huge amounts of development on something, spend an absolute fortune on developing something, and it doesn't even make it to market. 
and they'll scrap stuff like that on a regular basis. So I am not 100% surprised they did it. I know it was kind of a bit weird, like, you know, we just released this, but maybe they just released it and they were like, they had a goal to hit. And if they didn't hit that goal, it was like, well, we're just going to sack it off. And it looks like that probably happened, right, Pat? Yeah, that, that's what I would guess. I would guess that they said, hey, let's give it one more push. Because they were doing some heavy advertising for it, too. And I think they probably gave it that one more push and then were like, uh, if it was going to come back, don't you think it would have come back in time for Ghostbusters again? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean... Unless, well, yeah, I think that they probably would have given that an option. They're still making Ghostbusters stuff. Yeah, I mean... It's, I mean, it's all timely most of the time, isn't it? And they have to, they have to like, you know, you're talking about development stuff with this as well. And it's, it's interesting with the Selfie series because it is kind of, I suppose, already that it's a, it's a process in itself. And it doesn't seem to be like that long, the process. I was really surprised at how quick the Selfie um, process took and then delivered to me. That was, the, I think that was the most surprising part, actually, at how fast that process was. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, again, I, I don't know. Um, would you want to see it back? Is a is a question I actually I hadn't asked you. Would you do want to see this return? Do you care? If it was better, yes. Be- back better, yeah. Because it didn't really, it didn't look that much. Like, I, I was lucky. Mine looked more like me than other people's, but uh, some of those were not. Dude, it took me about thirty goes to get one I was happy with, and then when I got it, I was still not happy with the haircut. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. Right. Anyway, anyway, that's selfie series. Um, and like I said, we don't know what the situation is here. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see on this one. Uh, but if we don't see anything this year, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't bet on seeing it at all next yeah. year either. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, anyway, let's move on to uh, what we already know. Um, we're going to do this in kind of like in a little advance of the next news story, but. Basically, we've we've these are the name only reveals we have. Um, I'm currently in the process of doing a let's talk classified dial tone. Then we'll do frag viper. Then we'll do blowtorch, and then I'll do road pig. So we'll you know we'll get there. Um, but um, expect to see dial tone hopefully on Sunday. I should be able to get him ready for Sunday. So I might be able to bust that out tomorrow. Um, in any case, there's there's what we know name only reveals wise. Uh, digital renders. Um, now I say this because I feel like we might be seeing the retro. Beachhead, Eels, Snow Serpent, and I think we might see the Cobra Ferret as pre-orders very soon. Um, it might be what they reveal over WonderCon. We might get some like promotional imagery of these guys. Uh, maybe even the Ferret. Uh, you know, I could see the Ferret getting some promo stuff. Yes, Scott, we will be going live with a news burst later on tonight as well, following the WonderCon news. Um, I'll be joined by Travis Moody for that one from a toy kind of mood. Um, in any case, uh, I kind of want to see the Dragonfly stuff as well. I really want to see an up- update on the Dragonfly figures because I really want to see Ripcord, Cla- Crazy Legs, and Glenda. I'm desperate to see those blooming figures, Pat. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I, I I don't know, though. I'd rather they worked on other things than worry about giving us too many updates. But at the same time, we spent the money, so um, maybe something a little more frequent would be good. Yeah, and um, they are going to give us an update soon. We know we are aware of that, and effectively, it's just because um, there's not much bandwidth for the team at the moment. But we hopefully we'll get it. Um, anywho, uh, then of course we have the unofficial leaks, which could give us some clues as to what we might be revealed uh, over WonderCon, because we know that battle. No, sorry, we know that Cobra team members are going to be introduced that haven't. Um, in the past. So Heart Wrench is a possibility on that one, I would say, Pat. Um, you know, considering she was in that kind of group that's of, of four, three of which have already been name only officially revealed. So I kind of feel like Heart Wrench has, you know, got to be around the corner at some point on that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I'm excited to see what they reveal. Um, Travis says, thanks for the shout. Looking forward to it. Gives me something to do in this rain. Uh, in, <laughs> well, Hopefully you'll be indoors when we do that, Travis, and you won't have to be out in the rain while you do it. Um, Anyway, I'm I'm excited to see what we might see over WonderCon, but um, as for the rest of it, we know that the Marauders 2-pack is coming, as as is the Sarge. We have had multiple sources uh, confirm Snowcat and Thunder Machine, which is both terrifying and exciting at the same time. 
I obviously accidentally slipped up on the IG bat. That's out there now. And we've known about Retro Cobra Commander for ages. So, um, yeah, uh, I would expect all of these very soon in some way, shape, or form. Um, right then, that leads us on to the next news item. Let's do it. <laughs> Yes, WonderCon is around the corner. And like I said, I will be joined by Travis um, to chat about all the reveals from the show later tonight. We don't know when that will be exactly because, of course, you know what it's like. These events, you can't predict how long they'll last or what the situation is going to be. So if there's going to be images. But we do know one thing, don't we, Pat? We do. Yes. That... Uh... If if it is allowed to live stream, Philip is there. He is going to be there for sure. So if it is allowed to live stream, Philip will be live streaming it on articulated points. And so, if you if you uh, can't live stream it, he's going to film it anyway, right? Well, you know, I I would imagine somebody else would do that, but I I don't imagine if Philip was told not to do it, I don't think he will. But okay. you know, somebody else could. Yeah, maybe. But um. I I I would tune in to see what Philip does because he's always uh, about quality and making sure that things look good. And so um, I, I'm I'm definitely going to be looking at that. That'll be what is that? Uh, six p.m. Eastern, right? Yeah, about six. Yeah, six p.m. Eastern. Yeah. I think it actually said from three to four is what I thought it said. So yeah, it should hopefully be from six to seven. But like you said, who knows on on an exact end time. Yeah, because also, I mean, there's only going to be a certain segment that's going to be about classified. Uh, it's going to be all, you know, Hasbro brands. So right. we don't know if we'll be first, last, whatever. Um, in the past, we've usually been like towards the beginning or in the middle of those kind of big all-purpose toy brand kind of panels. So uh, we'll, we'll, you know, either way, it's I think it's going to be an exciting one to just check out in, in any case. And like, I'll be watching from like straight away because I want to watch I want to see all of the reveals from that brand panel I want to see what's going on um it's going to be fun if of course he's allowed everything will be uh will be done and I can't That's wait right. yeah really excited for that and we'll try and get as many images as well um if there are any to take for the uh, re kind of reaction uh, burst later that evening okay um, so like I said, or like Pat has well mentioned, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 6 to uh, 7 Eastern um, to today. Oh, my God. Oh, what time is it now? It's nearly 11. I, yeah. really, want it, I really want it to be 6 o'clock already. <laughs> Actually, the way we do episodes will probably will be 6 o'clock very soon. Uh, but as you can see, um, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, and Marvel will be, um, you know, a kind of in that panel so lots of cool stuff to talk about uh, and get into I'm very excited um and just to kind of reiterate it does say new cobra team members joining the gi joe classified series line so that's going to be fun um and i would also imagine based on this entertainment earth pre-order drop that we will more than likely see some sort of pre-orders as well so excited all lots of Ugh, I'm buzzing. Anyway, Pat, that's all the kind of news information uh, to kind of keep up with. We do have one more, probably the biggest news of the week kind of thing to talk about next. Um, and we're a little bit torn on this one, aren't we? But we'll do it anyway. It's Higher Toys News. Okay, Pat, say what everyone's thinking. Skin flap. How did you know what I was thinking? Uh, I wasn't even talking about that image. Um, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, so, of weird. course. It's weird. I, it's, the, I don't know if I've seen the rest of the figure yet. I just keep looking at that shoulder. It is a bit odd, isn't it? I, uh, I Like I said, I said before we kind of started, I kind of hope it is a you know like a one of those things that gets ironed out a little bit in you know development sort of thing um and also I, I initially thought oh maybe it's like supposed to be painted blue and is acting like an actual shoulder pad or guard or something um but it, the more we kind of look at it in different places the more it just look like you know the actual like the shoulder um and that is a little bit concerning isn't it 
because that does not look good. Yeah, I think I'll, as a last minute fix, um, making it blue would be the correct solution. They don't normally have sleeves that are that large either, but that would certainly be preferable to this. Uh, I just finally looked at the wavy knife. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so they've got little kind of wibbly daggers, haven't they? Um, anyway, yeah, so they hire toys. I mean, went real quiet, didn't they, for like a couple of weeks? Usually they were dropping stuff all the time. So, of course, um, I was ready with my text to send them a UOK Hun message, and uh, <laughs> they go and drop two at once at us. Obviously, we're looking at Tomax at the moment. Uh, but based on the way that they've been kind of promoting these, it looks as though we're going to get two separate, like, carded figures, um, which I I don't know how I'm enjoying. I don't like I don't like this. I kind of wish, and I know we've had the three pack where they've been combined with the Baroness, but like on the classified side of things, I didn't understand why they weren't a two pack. It just seemed to make sense that they'd be a two pack. They'd come together, and the artwork would be able to make sense. And you know you could be able to do a little bit more with them and maybe add some other accessories in with them because they were two pack. But instead, we get two separate releases, which didn't quite. It didn't quite like vibe necessarily with me. And because... as they started to uh, hit clearance, a lot of them got dumped to completely different places. Like I know, so you had Ross... Tomax in one and Zayn yeah. in the other. And I don't even think in the same continent. I, I don't. I don't think, from what I understand, they were just like wherever they can go as close as possible. Just get rid of them. And, nuts. Uh, yeah. So Absolutely good luck pairing those up over time. But I mean, they're out there. But you didn't. I don't know. If you missed them, you may have to pay some shipping. <laughs> From Corsica, where they originated. Right. Um, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I I find that the I find that, that move of separating them was a little weird. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure why it was necessary. Uh, but maybe it was at the time they just needed to fill some space with the waves and you know, like in terms of the budget they had working with. Yeah. I guess it was something along those lines. But it just seems like we didn't to have me... any two packs, though. We've had two packs, oh, no. not yeah. twins. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, hundred percent. So I feel like that was. I'm, I'm glad that we kind of got the three pack. At least they were combined in that crimson three pack, and that made sense. There's no point like separating them at that point. That would just be cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, but anyway, Higher Toys then, of course, have uh, modeled their figures as they always do on that kind of classified design. But then again, the classified design was almost identical to the vintage so it wasn't like there was a a big difference but yeah you're right pat they come with submachine guns with the silencers and they come with these wibbly daggers uh and of course two sheaths one on the uh uh one on the shin or the side of the of the calf and uh, one on the belt that kind of goes down to the thigh so um yeah there's tomax there he is I mean, they, the, I would say as well, they look fine, apart from that weird flap. Like, I just don't get what, what the idea is there. Thing. Don't you think that's looking a little big? Just make, which one? The gun? Yeah. Yeah, the gun looks massive. But then again, every one of the weapons that, they, that they've that they done for higher toys seem to be huge, don't they? Yeah. They haven't quite got the scaling. Probably, probably there. That. Like, yeah, I, I still remember... don't have any of these in hand. I've ordered multiples. It's just it's not happening. And I, I don't know why. I, I need to check on those orders that I made. It's so true. And it, it, it does seem like so long. How many, how many releases do we have now with these two? Probably about 16, 18, Maybe something like that. Something like that. And how many have people got in hand? Like at the most, two, I think, so far. Yeah, I, I, have, I have zero. So it's nuts. Um, I'm kind of surprised, oh, but then again, I think one of the main 17 is it? My goodness, I wasn't far off. Um, 17. <sighs> uh, Phil said, Same here, I've ordered a few and have nothing so far. You'd feel like with 17 releases, at least a third of those would be in hand by now, wouldn't you? Like, but then again, I think because it's so difficult, you know, it's only kind of like the, the territory wise, we're allowed to kind of sell them is only in the um you know in the far east basically i well, think now that we've got like the doors sort of opening with small joes and uh, there's a couple others that had them right as well oh yeah small joes has them and it, that that's promising because until then it felt like we're allowed to order them we're just not allowed to get them <laughs> you know we'll take your money 
but you have to come over here to get it. Is that cool? To be fair, I did get my money back on the snake eyes that I paid for and, and never yeah. showed up. Yeah. Um, I would say, other than that skin flap, though, I think it looked pretty dope. Um, uh, is what 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 what's what's sticking out to you, Pat? Other than that skin well, flap, the skin flap is sticking out. Uh, but the large weapon, um, I, I actually do like the daggers. Like that's uh, I've said that, but but I do like them. Um, you know, there's not anything really too surprising though about this. It's the twins. I, I kind of want to see what they look like in person. Yeah. Uh, Stanley's asked other US retailers for these. Yeah, we just mentioned one, smalljoes.com. Uh, um, you can get, I think, pretty much all of them so far. Um, yeah, go uh, check not out the early one. ones. The early ones okay. are not on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, there have been a lot of reveals actually recently with higher toys. And uh, like I said, I think 17 is the number they're at at the moment, which is going to make that graphic a lot harder to do. But um, yeah, like we've got, oh, oh God, I'm going to, should I even attempt it? Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, Cobra Commander. Um, yeah, maybe Beach we Head, need a graphic of all of them so far. Whenever Firefly, we do Baroness, Spirit, Zaymot Tomax. Did you say Flint? Flint, Tiger Force Flint. Zartan. Said Beachhead. Was there a major blood already? Major blood. 13 so far I've got. De did you you did say Destro? No, Destro. Lady J, thank you. 15. Two more. <laughs> Firefly, I think you said. Yeah, I said Firefly, I said Spirit. This is a fun game. Direfly says RKW. <laughs> Just give the um, other two good names and move trooper, on. Trooper, Cobra Trooper. Thank you, Cobra Trooper. One more. Was there a Python one? Viper. Viper. We got it. Okay. We got there, guys. We got there. Seventeen. There hasn't been a Python we... Patrol one yet, though, has there? No, but I think so. Just the Tiger mm. Force Flint, which isn't Python okay. Patrol, obviously, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, that's that. Oh. Sorry, I should also look at uh, Zaymot as well. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's the, probably the same figure, just with a scar. Um, actually, fact, in actual fact, I looked at both of them next to each other, because obviously there's a shot there. They are, yeah, they, it's pretty much just a mirror image of the uh, of the face, isn't it? Um, yeah. And the, uh, and the scar, there you go. So Zaymot and Tomax, not 100% feeling them, but only really because of that shoulder thing. Like, I think they look good other than that. I think the flap really does make a... A bit of a weird sticky outy distance so um yeah yeah crazy pants um anyway that is higher toys done and dusted covered in mustard um right one more question for higher toys for you pat who do you want to see who do you think's next is actually i think it's a good question who do you think is next we haven't had do we haven't had next. who sorry Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with a Python Patrol character. I think that that feels likely that they will probably do that. Cool. Uh, do you think maybe Python Viper? Because they've already got the Viper in much the same way they did with Flint and Tiger Force Flint. Yeah, I mean, they've got the Cobra Trooper as well. So it could be any Ooh, of that. Yes. Oh, actually, I wouldn't mind a Cobra Trooper uh, Officer version 2.0. <laughs> right. I wonder yeah. how they'd mess it up. They'd probably do their own um, pattern, actually, wouldn't they? Because they've done their own thing with Tiger Force Flint. So I wonder if they'd do That's their own true. thing yeah. Yeah, with um, with the Python. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Cophead's a good shout, Chris. A Python Cophead as well. But like Cophead in general would be a good one to, for them to do. I could see Cophead turning up, honestly. Um, they'll just curveball and hit us with Cool Breeze and White Clown. <laughs> could you imagine? Or no, what they'll do is they'll do one of Pat's deep cuts. They'll do Scarhead and um, Flash Force, won't they, mate? For your yeah, that'll be it next. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch our monthly that we recorded yesterday. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that, mate. That was so much fun chatting with you and Adam again. Um, I do like it when we get like a group of us together. It's 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 good, isn't it? I like I like For doing sure. solos and stuff, but I prefer doing it with other people, like the weekly with you like the, the monthly i just i just prefer it 
it's all it's always better with a couple more people involved <laughs> delving into o rings you know what i'm saying um yep, any, sure. anyway um yeah uh they'll sorry past the progy said they'll just curveball and hit us with cool breeze and white clown and pat would never be able to get them that would just be horrible that would be really mean i think it can count on smalljoes.com at this point i mean he's been around forever i've bought a ton of stuff from him Scott says, who would you like to see at this point? Any of them to show up. <laughs> says Pat. So Pat, who do you want to see in the line next? The friggin' figures I ordered is what I want to see in the line. Yeah, um, it does get to the point where you're like, it's been a while. It's been a while. And we have they have been distributed because we've seen them in hand. We've seen them, people yeah. have them in other parts of the world. People have them in the US. I think, doesn't Phil have one? Or did he just say he didn't? I think he said he didn't. Yeah. You no, know, he didn't. It doesn't, does he? No, I'm thinking Which of I the, thought um, that he did, but I think that, that was just him saying earlier that he'd ordered them. I I was thinking of his video that he did of the flame toys snake eyes. Okay. See, this is where it, I mean, can you believe that was a thing? Like I've completely forgotten about all of that. Like the amount of stuff that just gets like done, and you just right. you know, it becomes like a, a distant memory, and it's not even that old. Crazy. Yeah. Anyway. That is all the news we have for you for this week, guys. Uh, like I said, I'll be back tonight with uh, Travis to talk about the WonderCon stuff. Uh, but for now, Pat, let's get stuck in uh, to our shout out have you tried hoarder yet no well you need to if you have a collection of things and want to create a fun and easy way of organizing it and of course showing it off then get involved you can post items and build collections and you can drop a status like getting a fun delivery or seeing some awesome related stuff on your travels build your collections with hoarder the app is free to download on google play and the app store so what are you waiting for get to hoarding Sorry, man. The music on this show is amazing. Uh, anyway, Pat, shout outs. Who are we going for first? I think we of know. Of course, shout out to Philip, and he's in the comments, I believe. Maybe not still, but he was. He made here one earlier. comment to make it look like he was listening and watching, and then he just bounced. He just he turns up for four seconds, and then just goes, "I'm sod this. This is rubbish." And then, as a reminder, earlier on, we said that he will be at WonderCon today. He's oh, he's still here. He needs to get himself to WonderCon. Uh, so he'll be at WonderCon today, and as long as it is permissible, he will be live streaming the Hasbro panel. So, um, on you know, for Articulated Points, check out Articulated Points, which is the channel that Philip and I have put together, and we've put a lot of work into it. This year, Philip has put a lot of work in. I've put a lot of work into it, just we haven't put that out yet. Um, <laughs> so anything you've seen so far this year has been philip putting work into it not me but uh you know that doesn't mean he can't put more work into it today which all he plans to do old slack stewart over here <laughs> uh, uh uh phil says uh fingers crossed i have a plan to make sure the panel will be live streamed phenomenal uh, is that is that are you gonna have to use a potato to film it though phil like these kind of like stealth mission sort of uh things have to be done the the panel at was it san diego comic-con with the uh hasbro brand team that i was really happy with philip's quality of that so it was amazing I, I was excited that he could just do it for articulated points and then it was you know really good quality so um yeah i'm hopefully uh he gets in there and is, is allowed to so yeah I think fingers that's, crossed that's on that. the thing I also, it's nice to see a live stream from a panel where it's not the back of some dude's head uh, for most of it. Because we had one, I think it was ages ago now. It would have been one of the um, SDCC ones, I think, from like a couple of years back or something. And you've got like the, you've got the uh, screen and then, and then this, these, this guy's head was just like there in the bottom right hand corner the whole time. And it's just like... Can we at least move it so you can see the screen and not the head? I mean, surely that can be done, but no. Anyway, um, Phil says, the SDCC Hasbro panel allowed live streaming, but the Skybound panel did not. I have hopes this panel today will allow it. Uh, brilliant. Hopefully it will. It will. Um, Ron has asked if it's streaming on Facebook, but no, I think it'll be all YouTube, that won't it, mate? Unless Phil does also 
simultaneously do it to Facebook? That's a question for Phil, actually, probably. Yes, there, I'm sure there's a time delay here, but hopefully he will come through and answer. Okay. But I, I would answer. check out I would check out the YouTube channel because be for sure it it should be going up to YouTube as he streams. Absolutely. So yeah, massive shout out to Phil. Um, and of course, cannot wait. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we get to see that panel streamed live on articulated points. Very excited about that. Oh, YouTube only. We don't want. We don't have it set up for Facebook simultaneously. There you go, Ron. So um, it will just be YouTube only this time around. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh yeah, it does. Um, right then. Next up, uh, shout out to my wonderful wife Kate and Phoebe. They're upstairs at the moment. I can hear them. I can hear them moving around. Um, <laughs> that sounded like that sounded like a like a horror film I was in. I can hear them. I can hear them moving around. They're in the walls. Yeah, I can hear them. They're in the walls. Um, anyway, mass, yeah, big shout out to my wonderful wife and Phoebs. Uh, love you very much. And of course, to our wonderful families in the UK and the US. Hopefully, we'll be seeing everyone very soon as well, which is very exciting. Um, we've got um, visits planned coming to our house in the on the East Coast. Uh, it's so weird that I own a house. I can't, I don't know how that's happened. Um, twice actually in my lifetime. But I don't know how this this one happened. It's gorgeous, this house. I don't know what what have we done. Anyway, massive shout out. Love you very much, honey. And of course, Brian Sauer uh, for our amazing graphics. Of course, we've got the new Shockwave graphics, which I think are really nice for the uh, for spring. And of course, related to Brian, lots of assembly required stuff. So of course, um, assembly required in the actual physical go to in human touch convention the 13th annual De Des Moines Iowa um, that will be happening on November 8th and 9th 2024 more information and news to follow but I like to bring it up every episode anyway and of course before that if you want a little online taster of a bit of assembly required we have Operation Armor 4 in June which uh, Pat we we know that you're you've got some stuff planned for this one, and is that part of some of the hard work you've been up to? It, it certainly is. Yes, I, yeah. I've uh, not the only person putting some work in, but but um, you know, it, it's going to be good. Absolutely. At least I think it was good. So maybe maybe people will be like Pat, what were you thinking? But uh, um, no, I, I think so it's going to be worthwhile. Yeah, Pat, what the hell are you doing, mate? What's going on? Why have we got a twelve-hour episode here? Jeez. <laughs> Um, RKW has said, is that a Photoshop sun flare in regards to that? No. <laughs> that was just an absolutely perfectly timed J.J. Abrams selfie is what that was. Uh, no, I did not. Do you, think I, do you think I could be bothered to go back and put a Photoshop sun flare on there? You might That's think just yes. what his hair does when it's outside. He takes his hat off and it shines like that. Exactly. Pat's seen it for real, so he knows. Um, that's hilarious though, RKW, but no, it's not. Uh, I, I didn't do that on purpose for Photoshop wise. Um, Liquid Identity says, no, just Chris's angelic presence. I like that. Um, Pastor Progi says, I'd buy a couch with all of these background patterns. Shockwave couch would be baller, wouldn't it? I want a yeah. shockwave couch. I want, sure. oh man, I want that. I want, I want an item of furniture in this base basement that is gi joe patterned oh my god it's happening it's happening i'm doing it anyway um also shout out to oh we're, we're, we're at the kickley gallery now pat yeah for sure there's uh a number of them this week right i would say too many um for our shout outs but no amazing work as always by kickley we've got scarlet and storm shadow uh, on the claw obviously reminiscent of the um silent issue we've got um, a world's without end homage here with the Baroness and Steeler in an embrace, and obviously Steeler's skeletal remains in the in the Mobat behind him, which is really dark, uh, but quite fun still at the same time. Uh, we also have Snake Eyes doing some DJing on there, which again is is quite brilliant. I even love the fact that his headphones like he's got them like that. I, I love yep, that, right. like one. One headphone on, one headphone just brilliant. Um, I love that. And of course, Snake Eyes and, and Scarlet upside down 
in an embrace while shoot while aiming in the same direction to shoot or maybe just maybe just supply some cover while they're exposed a little bit um also their legs are so entwined i can't even see what i can't even work out what's going on it just looks like there's a lot going on in the entwining of those legs um and then of course we do have uh, you know continuing on that theme of the silent issue we have snake eyes and scarlet on the claw there uh, while Snake Eyes is laying down some cover fire with his Uzi. And uh, Croc Master, that's a nice Croc Master too. I do like that one. Um, yeah, they're really great. What are your thoughts so far, Pat? You enjoying these? Yeah, obviously issue 21 is such a, a good time. I always love that one. So any anything related to that is fun. Uh, we also have this one with the Skyhawk with Flint, Steel Brigade, and uh, Airborne, which is nice. Uh, hanging on for dear life. I say hanging on for dear life. Airborne is literally surfing that, and the Steel Brigade guy's just got his like arm against the cockpit. That's it. He's not holding on to anything. They are screwed, really, aren't they? Yeah. Somebody should tell Airborne that's not a parachute. That it's just you know like a, a, a it's a blanket. They, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, a bedroll. Yeah, the it's shovel. Not, a, not an air, not a parachute. Why isn't that shovel turning into a parachute? Why isn't the why isn't this the, the, yeah the the like the bed I guess cloth. it's the same for both of them. It's the same backpack. Exactly. Uh they're both kind of they've both been lied to there. It's amazing. Uh anyway, yeah, brilliant stuff. And finally, we have Snake Eyes and Clutch in the Vamp. That's probably going to cause some ear hearing issues for Clutch, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to fire both these submachine guns either side of your head, Clutch, so both ears get screwed. Hopefully his helmet's protecting him, um, you know, enough there. But really cool. Um, are you gonna? Are you you could probably you can mock this up, Pat, with your vamp and retro snake eyes and clutch. Yeah, that's true. That is true. You should I do that. Send me a now. picture of this. Go do that now. Uh, just kidding. Anyway, thank you very much. Massive shout out to Kickley, of, of course, as all as always, and of course to you guys in the in the chat and the comments. Thank you so much for all of your support. We really appreciate it. All the listens, the views, all that good stuff, and our patrons, of course, as well. Um, we'll see if uh, I'll see if I can get an episode out this weekend for you guys as well, uh, a Q and A, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But anyway, Pat, dude, thank you so much for joining me, mate. It's been a it's been a blast. Yeah, thanks. It's always fun. I appreciate being on every week. And I did say there was a hard stop at eleven fifteen, and we're not far off. I'm only two two minutes late. You said, you said to me it was earlier than that. When are you first? And then you were like, uh, you I said like, I could push it to eleven at, at eleven, and then you were like, oh well, it's not a hard stop at eleven. It's more like eleven fifteen. I mean, I'm just trying so. to give myself enough time, and now I've ruined it all by going on this weird kind of chat. And now yeah. it's like 18 minutes We're past. Chat about how we stopped three minutes ago. <laughs> but didn't. And by the way, I won't, I won't, it was an accident last week. And a lot of people noticed that we, I cut everyone off uh, before we said full force. I think we got an F out, but I was literally hovering over the thing to press it and I pressed it too early. And I thought, hey, it was still quite funny. And I it, thought you were just it... cutting me off. That's what I thought. <laughs> No, it was a complete accident. So hopefully I won't do it this time. No, I, I promise I won't do it this time. Anyway, stay fresh, cheese bags. And as always, after three, you know what to do. Like, I'm not going to do it, Pat. Don't worry. After three, one, two, Full three. force. <laughs> I had to make sure I got it in. <laughs> Full force. Laters. <laughs>Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force